All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to math. Today, we're going to do lesson 10.4. We're going to make bar graphs. We made picture graphs. Now we're going to make bar graphs. So super fun. So make sure you have your math workbook here with you so that you can work along with me as we watch this video. Okay. So um, remember, we don't normally do the first page, though I do love this because it is a great opportunity to make a graph. So you know what? Let's do today's up front. Let's take a look. So the problem is Dan keeps track of the food he sells at the soccer game. So this is all the food at the soccer game. Uh, and it looks delicious, right? Who doesn't love tacos and pizza and hot dogs? Um, so this is the food he sells at the soccer game. He sells all of the food on the table. Make a bar graph to show the food Dan sells. Okay, we're gonna make a bar graph together before we go on in, and that'll be really fun. Okay, so this is all the food he sells, and we need to put it in the graph. So we are gonna shade in a box for each of the food. So just like we did with the sheep in a lesson before, and I think we did some flowers in a vase, you're gonna do the same thing. But instead of putting circles for the picture graph, we're gonna shade in the boxes for the bar graph. Okay, so let's start. I like to start at one end, and then uh, cross them out as we go. So let's start, first one is, what is that? That's a hot dog. So let's cross it off, come down, shade in a box for hot dog. All right, let's keep going. Next we have what? Pizza, cross out pizza, come to pizza, shade in pizza. All right, we're building a bar graph. Taco, cross out taco, shade in taco. All right, you can go ahead and keep going. I'm gonna keep going too. You can work with me or you can go ahead and do it on your own and we'll talk about it at the end. Got another hot dog. Got another hot dog. Okay, whoops, gotta go back over here for my pizza. This is making me hungry. Okay, we're almost done. And we finished. Okay, so now we have a bar graph. Do you have a bar graph too? Our bar graph should be the same, right? Because we're working from the same table of food. So, did you make a bar graph like mine? How many pizzas do you have on yours? One, two, three, do you have three pizzas? Excellent, give yourself a pat on the back. How many hot dogs do you have? Do you have five hot dogs? Excellent, give yourself a pat on the back. How many tacos do you have? Do you have four tacos? So do I. Give yourself a pat on the back. All right, excellent job. Look at you, super graph builders. Okay, let's turn the page. Make sure I'm just turning, oops, I'm turning two pages. Okay, turning a page. Fantastic. Okay, we're gonna do what we just did. Are there more daisies or, uh, well, they are sunflowers, that's a sunflower. Are there more daisies or sunflowers in the garden? Okay, are there more white flowers or yellow flowers in the garden? Make a bar graph to find out. Shade one box for each flower in the picture. Because we just did that food, we are already experts at this. Okay, so our title is flowers in the garden. Kinds of flowers are daisies and sunflowers. Oh, I could have just read that and I would have known what they were instead of trying to figure it out. And then number of flowers on the bottom. So. Go ahead and do what we just did with the food and let's do it. They've already shaded one of the daisies in for us. So you don't have to color that one in. All right, let's make some more. Let's shade some more in. So look, oh, they've even crossed that one out because they already did it. All right, let's keep working. You can do this. There's another daisy. I'm gonna cross it out so I don't forget that I made it already. There's another daisy. So like in the other one, I just kind of went down the line and you can do that too. But for this graph, I'm just picking out all the white daisies because they're pretty easy to see. Did I do that one? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Yeah, you can always go back and count. If you can't remember like, mm, did I make a box for that? You can go back and count and see just to check your work. It's pretty smart to do that. All right, sunflowers. And you can even double check your graph too by saying, all right, let's check. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. I got it. Yeah, checking your work is always awesome strategy. All right, now I'm gonna do sunflowers. And you can do it this way too. Watch, I'm gonna do a shortcut. Are you ready for it? Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So now I'm just gonna go all the way to the seven because I counted them. 
Have you done that already? Have you been already doing that? Some of you might have been. I just had to think about it right there. But that way you're not going by and crossing them all out. You can just kind of get a good count, find the number, boom, you're done. Different ways of doing it. All the ways are the good ways. Here we go. There are more blank in the garden. Okay, now that you have your graph, what is the most, what flower do they have the most of? Is it daisies or sunflowers? You don't even have to count anymore, right? Because you've got that awesome graph. What is it? Yeah, sunflowers. So we want to write the word sunflowers because that's what we have the most of. All right. Do more children write with their left hand or right hand? Ask 10 friends which hand they use. Make a bar graph. Okay, so you need to ask 10 people or however many people in your house, right? But no more than 10 if they're left-handed or right-handed. The nice thing about this question is your mom or dad might know if their brothers and sisters are left-handed or right-handed, so they could probably just give you a lot of information. Let's see, if we were in my house, I will go ahead and give you two. My son is left-handed, so if you want to, you can shade in for Ethan, he's left-handed, and I myself am right-handed, so you could shade in for me also for being right-handed. Um, and then now you only have to ask 10 people, so there you go. Or you can ask less people um, and you don't even have to use Ethan and I. But if you'd like that free information, go ahead. Then after you filled out your graph, and let's say I'm going to fill out my graph. Let's see, uh, my husband is right-handed. I know that, um, let's see, my friend Sally is right-handed. My cousin Katie is left-handed. And um, my neighbor is right-handed. So there we go. I'm just going to do, maybe I could only do how many to have four, six. Maybe you have 10, maybe you have less, that's okay. Then you're going to use this information to answer the question. Which hand do more children use to write? So if we were using my graph with what I have now, which one is more? Is it left or right? Yeah, more is right-handed. Now, is your graph going to be the same as my graph? Probably not. And your graph will probably look different than my graph. It might look the same, you never know. Or you might have the same answer here, but you might have different numbers, okay? So feel free to make it special, make it your own. Okay, because this chapter is all about making bar graphs, we're making more bar graphs. Okay, draw conclusions. Do children like teddy bears, blocks, or marbles best? Ask 10 friends which toy they like best. Again. We don't have to do 10 friends, right? We've already covered that a few times now. Make a bar graph, write a title and labels for your bar graph. So you can title your own. Because the question is asking what toy they like best, I would probably call this graph favorite toy. Now, because we're doing a lesson, a general lesson, this might not be anybody's favorite toy, but you just kind of have to ask people, which one do you like best, right? That's what they've given you to work with. It's okay, we can work with that. And then down at the bottom, we're going to call this number of people. And we're not gonna put kids, right? Because um, we're not in school right now. So just number of people that we ask. What do you like better? So go around your house and ask, do you like bears, blocks, or marbles best? And then whatever they tell you, you go ahead and shade it in. For me, let's see, what do I like? I think I might like blocks best because it kind of reminds me of Lego and I love Legos. So you can shade in blocks for Mrs. Smalley if you'd like to, and then go ask some more people what they think. After you've gotten your chart filled out, then you're gonna answer the questions. Okay, first one, which toy did the most children choose circle? So after you've filled in your graph. And the next one, how many children chose blocks? So you're gonna count how many chose blocks and then write it down after you're done with your graph. That would be awesome. So you have two choices. You can pause the video right here, you can go do your graph, or you can do it later on, maybe when everyone comes home or um, when it's easier for everyone to do it. For number five, how are picture graphs and bar graphs alike? I want you to think about that for a second. Now you don't have to write it down, but I do want you to tell somebody or tell me in the video 
um, how are picture graphs and bar graphs alike? Now you might have to go back into your book and look at some picture graphs and then look at some bar graphs and see what is similar, okay? Or what is the same about those two? There's a couple things that are different, but what is similar or the same? And then you can just tell somebody, you don't have to write it down. Okay, we're moving on. Oh, it's a mid-chapter checkpoint. So we don't have additional work here. We have the mid-chapter checkpoint. What I'd like you to do is go ahead and do this. This is a, kind of a review of everything we've done so far. So I am going to, I'll go ahead and read you the questions and then I want you to answer them. And I want you to show this mid-chapter checkpoint to a grown-up in your house. I want them to look it over. And anything, if there's an area that you missed, have them check it and have you fix it. And if there's something that you still don't understand and something that's confusing for you, make sure they let me know, or maybe you go back and watch a couple of the other videos to have a little review. Okay, for the first one, use the picture graph to answer the questions. So here's your picture graph. It's called, do you wear glasses? The choices are yes or no. So this many people, yes, wear glasses. This many people, no, do not wear glasses. Each circle stands for one child. So, how many children do not wear glasses? Write your number here. Look at the chart. Number two, how many children wear glasses? Okay, look at the chart, see how many yes wear glasses and write the number here. All right, now you're gonna use this bar graph to answer the questions. The title is how we get to school. And these are the ways we get to school. We ride in a car, we ride our bike, or we take the bus. Now you may have a different way, but we're just going with these for right now. These are the number of children that chose it. So look at this bar graph. How many children take the bus to school? Look at the bus. How many children take the bus to school? Write the number here. All right, finally, is the sentence true? Choose yes or no. So you're gonna pick yes if it's true, no if it's not true. We do these all the time in class, so you should know this. Five children ride in a car or ride a bike. Look at your graph. Five children ride in a car or ride a bike. Okay, so that is a little tricky. It means that five children ride combined in a car or a bike, okay, combined. Is that true, yes or no? Mark one of these. More children go by car than by bus. So look at your chart. Is that true, more go by car than by bus? If it's true, mark yes. If it's not true, mark no. And then finally, fewer children go by bike than by car. So look at bike and look at car. Which one is fewer, bike or car? They're saying fewer go by bike than by car. If that's true, mark yes. If it's not true, mark no. All right, when you're done with that, make sure somebody looks over it for you to see how, to kind of track how you're doing in these lessons. All right, so today's uh, assignment is you're gonna make another bar graph. You're gonna make your favorite meal. Is it breakfast, lunch, or dinner? And answer some questions. Then we're gonna read a bar graph. How do you like to travel? And your spiral review is a fact family review. You can do that. You're gonna make another subtraction fact to fit into this fact family. And then you are going to add. Now you can add making pictures to add or whatever strategy, if you like picture strategy, if you like fact family strategy, if you like place value strategy, however you wanna do it, okay? And then here, hmm. Okay, so this is essentially doing the same thing. That's, that's using place value strategy to add this. So you have four tens and three ones, two tens and one one. So four tens and two tens is how many tens? Six tens. Okay, we're just gonna do this one together. Three ones and one one is how many ones? Four ones, okay. So six tens and four ones is what number? Or six tens is 60 plus four ones is four. 60 plus four is what? 
So this answer will be the same as this answer. So there you go, I got you set up for that. And that is it for today's math lesson. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you for our next math lesson.